Hello, today I'm going to be talking about um, Project Shooting Star for Khan Academy. And essentially, what they want you to do is to get this ellipse to move. And that's going to be pretty much the basis for all kinds of programs. Like, if you want to make a game and you want your character to move, you're gonna na you're gonna have to know how to draw an animation using the draw function and instead of just drawing static pictures, and that will require you to change the value of some variables. Now, don't look too hard at this code, because like, let me just tell you, 99% of this is just figuring out really complicated ways to change the variables, but right here is a function similar to ellipse, and right here is an actual ellipse function, and those are the only two drawing codes in this entire thing, and the rest of it was just figuring out really complicated ways to move my variables around and give them different values so that I could do this crazy, crazy, crazy uh, translation of essentially what is a vector, but let's get back to the basics. In order for you to get this uh, ellipse to move to the right, all you have to do is change this variable right here, because this tells the ellipse function how far to the right. This tells how far down, and this tells it how wide to draw, and this tells it how what the height is. <clears throat> now, you can do this by saying x pause equals x pause plus 1, or you can say plus 10, or plus whatever number you want. If you have it 10, then it's going to go zipping off as fast as 10 pixels per frame which is like 30 pixels per second, or 60, depending on what the default frames per second is. I, I believe it's 60. <laughs> well, that would make it 600 pixels per second. And this is about 400 pixels, and it took about less than half a second to get from there to there, so that sounds about right, 600 pixels per second. You could have uh, you could have it subtracting a value, and then it's going to go to the left. Or, instead of either of those, you could have shorthand notation. That means subtract 1 each time. This means add 1 each time. There's also the shorthand notation plus equals and minus equals, and then you can add a number. <clears throat> Instead of saying x pause equals x pause plus 8, I'm saying x pause plus equal 8. It means the exact same thing. Just take the value that was in x pause before and assign it a new value of that old value plus 8 is one way to think about that. So let's look at the directions. We've essentially done um up to here add another star going in a different direction this kind of trips people up sometimes because they forget that they can add more variables anytime you want you can add more variables now i, I don't want to name it this because i already have that variable name so i'll just add some more whoops Khan Academy is being a little bit goofy. X pause 2 for um, my second X position. And I'll start it out in a slightly different place. How about 100 to the left and 
300 down. So that should be right here somewhere. 100, 300. So why am I not seeing anything? Well, it's because I haven't told it to draw. I'm going to leave the fill, fill color the same. That'll propagate down and fill my next ellipse. And I'm just going to copy this right here. What was that? I said copy. Actually, I'll copy this too. Just to illustrate one fact, they are now going in the exact same direction, which is counter to the directions. So how do I get them to go in a different direction? Well, the most basic way would be to do that, so they're going in opposite directions, plus to the first star, minus to the second star. Another thing you can do is you can add something to both variables which will cause them to go the stars to go off at an angle theoretically if you spell <laughs> the variable that you're intending to change correctly. Yep, did you see that? That one went off down that way. If I want it to get it to go up at about this angle, um, if I make this a negative, and if I make it greater than this number, I'm actually going to turn this one down a little bit then. Then it'll go off at a steeper angle. So there's all kinds of stuff you could do. Um, how about making this one also go up? So subtract y from y pause each time. Subtract some y value from y pause each time. <clears throat> That's almost the same direction, so make it even steeper. All right, what else? Change the star to a different shape, or have it shoot out of a cannon. Well, it's always good to go and check the documentations chat tab, documentations tab, and. Here's all the shapes. What could we use? We could use rectangles. Let's try out a rectangle because that will not require changing any of the arguments. If I tried a triangle, I'd need to add Now, to make it look a little bit more star-like, one thing you could possibly do is to rotate your rectangles. I'm not going to do that. That's a little bit more advanced. Ask me if you want me to do a tutorial on rotations. They're very useful. Um, you could use a couple of triangles overlaying each other. <clears throat> Do a skyscraper, have a backdrop. Why not do a backdrop? Because then I can show you how to get images.
So this function, instead of drawing something to the screen, it returns a variable. And so I'm setting, I'm using the assignment equals, and I'm setting that variable inside of this variable named stars. So then I use a second function called image. And I'm going to do it after the background so it draws on top of that, but before my shooting stars, which are supposed to be in the foreground. And I'm going to say image. That's the function I was talking about. And it takes as the first parameter an image variable, which is an, as returned by get image. And then kind of like ellipse and rect, you got to specify some parameters. The star right here means that that is optional. So you don't have to worry about that. You could just do x and y. Maybe if they had one that looked more like a moon, that would be an appropriate size. But I will shrink that down. So maybe a little bigger. Yeah, that's looking good. 2020. All right, now that I've got that uh, set up, I'm going to cut and I'm going to introduce you to for loops. So in a for loop you specify the starting uh, parameter. I is um, the iterator of the loop. Each cycle through the loop I am going to check against a value and I'm going to say if I is for bar i equal to zero, i less than the end value. So let's say we want to draw 20 stars. About so I'm going to do that. If i is less than, if i is greater than 20, then it's going to break out of this loop. While it's less than 20, I'm going to do this next conditional i plus plus, shorthand for add one to the previous value of i. So i starts out at zero and then it goes through the loop. And while i is 0, it's going to execute this block of code. And here is that uh, image that we set up. And that's the syntax for the for loop. So it's just going to draw 20 stars right here. But that's not exactly what we want to do. We want our stars to be sort of flickering all over the place right here. So for the x value of the ith star that I'm drawing, I'm going to use another function called random. And it requires two parameters. It requires a start and a stop value as well, kind of like a for loop. And it just returns a random number in between the two parameters instead of looping. <laughs> so 0 to 400. That'll give me a value somewhere in between those points, 0 and 400. And now I'm going to copy this and put it into the y parameter. And that does not look very much like a starry night because stars don't jump around like that. So you might want to set up a static image that um, if they do this exactly once, then and then draw that to the screen. But if I take this and I put that outside of the draw loop, then it's not going to draw anything at all because it has a background being drawn. So when the program loads up, it sets up these variables, it gets this. It draws a bunch of things to the screen, gets into the draw loop, bam, erases the entire backdrop that you're trying to do. So I need some way of getting that information and storing it in a variable, which conveniently enough, there's a function called get. 
So I'm going to set up a second image variable. And I'm going to specify the top left coordinate of the screen that I want to capture and the width and the height. And now I can use this just like I would any other image variable. Well, there's one slight tweak I need to make to this. Um, when I when I saved this image, uh, it was drawing those stars on top of the blank white canvas that is set up by default. But now when I draw that image of that backdrop in front of my background, it just uh, erases my background with that blank white uh, canvas that was set up. So before I draw those stars, I need to call background with the parameter 0, 0, 0, 0. It's important to put four of them because this is the alpha channel. And alpha just means use a transparency. So that should work. Yep, now I have a transparent backdrop in S because of this fourth parameter. So when I image S here, then this background shows through. I could have just as easily um, done this and not talked about transparency. Just start out by drawing my um, stars on a blue background instead of trying to get the S image to show through <clears throat> the blue. Either way, it's kind of equivalent, but there are cases when in the future you might want to use transparency channels. Anyways, I'm losing my voice, so if you have any questions, you'll have to contact me one way or another, message me on Khan Academy, leave a message below in the YouTube channel. Good luck. Happy coding.